<laughs> my whole two first backpacks are filled with items you can only get, like, special items you can find by, like, archaeology or craftings or whatnot. And they're oh, all snap. things that do random things like the amber I found in archaeology, where I trapped myself in a pit of amber for, like, Oh, I've got that. I've, I've got, got that. My, I've got my first two backpacks, which are both the biggest backpacks you can get, except yeah. for the first one. The first one's just a normal one. I got them both filled all the way with items like that. <laughs> That's what I do in World of Warcraft. I have I have uh, over a hundred and some odd mounts. I don't even have half of that. I got over a hundred, which means uh, well, I got the uh, albino Drake. Oh, uh. I'm actually oh wait, not a hundred. I'm at like ninety-seven because I need like three more mounts, and then I can get the blue dragon hawk. Ah, uh, the dragon hawk. <laughs> It's Chip and Dale! There, for some reason, your ship's engineers! Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Anyways... I don't know why either. Um, right here is the world map. What you see here are two worlds we can go to. This right here, the one I've highlighted, is Hercules. We will go to that later. Uh, nostalgia. I've, I've seen this map way and too long. And then, <laughs> here is Alice in Wonderland, which is where we're going to go. It's typically the best place to start off, even if you're experienced with the game, because there are items that get you can get here that'll help you on. Indeed. Um, also from this menu, you can go to the Gummy Garage, which we'll go to later when we actually have things to, you know, work on our ship with. Totally make a Millennium Falcon. <laughs> yeah. I wish. I, I am not creative enough in that to do that. Um, I made, I remember once I made, it was my homage to the Borg. <laughs> Just made oh, a you made a giant cube, didn't you? cube <laughs> with the lasers on all sides, to the point where I don't know why it did this, I guess it's just what happens if you put too many guns on your ship. I could only click the gun once, and it would fire every laser, and then I'd have to wait for a recharge. <laughs> we are the bog. Okay, now, here's <laughs> how we go flying around as a gummy ship. As Donald and Goofy will explain. Did we win the race against Riku? Yes. I can't remember what we named it. Like, USS something. We or call another. it the USS EHC film. Yeah! Look at that, Donald. And that, Goofy. I'm sorry, Goofy, you're not talking, you're just kind of flapping, oh, yeah. your, you're flapping your head. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think so, it's painful for Goofy to floss. He's only got those, like, yeah. two teeth. Well, he doesn't just, even have to gotta get, like, steel wool, like, like it's wide enough to fit through the ground. That'll hurt. Ow. <laughs> fire the lasers! Okay, so pretty much press X, fire, and you move around like you would normally. Hey! Hey, those got a Do a barrel roll! You can't barrel roll. Oh, exactly. but you can dodge roll. <laughs> ow, ow! I was trying to shoot those. Warrant, warrant. <laughs> Anyways. This is like a less You got your speed. health meter and you got your magic meter, and magic meter never goes down. It's like a less smooth version of Starbucks. Kind of. Because it has that retreat back to the middle every time you let go of the direction. Yeah. Which sometimes works, but not all they did. I think I might like the gummy sections from 2 better. I like the gummy garage better in this one. Oh yeah, I, I never was... messed with it in 2. <laughs> 2 it was confusing as all heck. Um, and this one it's really simple. One thing I loved is how you can get the <clears throat> blueprints to make the enemy ships. Yeah. Because there are some enemy ships that I really liked, and I was like, I want to fly it. No, and what's they funny? Me. What's funny is the blueprints for some of these ships don't even matter because the ship is unflyable. Mm -hmm. You look at it and be like, oh, it can't fly. What? <laughs> then how is it flying in the game? Honestly, I'm not the only one that thinks it's hilarious to the image of like just a little heartless sitting there with a like an X-wing. Pilot's helmet on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not saying anything because they don't say anything. Are they just they're just twitching as they fly? <laughs> and their ship's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a world in the distance. And guess what it is? A pink <laughs> Yes. <laughs> very pink. very pink. So okay, there is a Sora game for Kingdom Hearts where he has no companions. I just realized that. It's called Recoded. It's not even Sora. It's a coded version I heard of about soda. That. A soda. A soda. Soda. <laughs> soda is heartless. <laughs> Anyways, 
it's pretty much a coded version of Sora going through the first game again, except with at with a different mini games and some plot differences. That one's for the DS, right? Yes. Never played it. Never had an urge. The only and the only other games I've had an urge to play after two were originally three five A session days, but once I started playing that, I'm like, I don't have this urge anymore. <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> And then, um, the only one's Birth by Sleep, because I was just curious. Like, what the heck is this all about? And Dream Drop Distance, but I don't have a PSP or a 3DS anymore. I played Dream Drop, not Dream Drop, I played Birth by Sleep. It's actually a lot of fun. The combat, it looked it. The combat's a lot of fun, but the plot gets really confusing, because it's shown from three different point of views. Aw, oh, Kingdom Hearts, don't do that. You're confusing enough without three point of views. Like, you choose which point of view you want, you play through on that one, mm -hmm. and then you go back to the beginning and choose another one and do the same thing twice. <sighs> for three different point of views, and then you get the final boss, which is one point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you get another section after that final boss. <laughs> I'm gonna say this right out, I'm probably gonna... I'm gonna try not to offend some people. Yes, I think Alice in Wonderland is a great story. I personally think the Disney movie is a little overrated. Which one? The, uh, the... This one. Okay. The sequel was weird. It was just... I get it. Tim Burton making Alice in Wonderland. You mix weird with weird, you're supposed to get even weirder. It didn't work all that well. I didn't... Un I didn't hate the movie, but it just wasn't that good. Yeah, see, thank you. I do not care for the uh, Johnny Depp Alice in Wonderland at all. My main problem with that movie was, in fact, Johnny Depp. Because he's no longer an actor who can play... It's, it's no longer Johnny Depp as this. It's this movie's featuring Johnny Depp. Yeah. He's just Johnny Depp. And I'm like, he, he's a good actor. It's just you can no longer see a movie with Johnny Depp where he's playing a character. He's playing himself pretty much in every movie now. Sort of like um, Robert Downey Jr. And how Jim Carrey eventually became. And I, I like Jim Carrey. You haven't seen him in many things lately. I like Jim Carrey. Uh, I saw him. In, he was in Bruce Almighty, but I'm still like, yeah. he's not a character in Bruce Almighty. He's Jim Carrey being cast in this movie. He's Jim Carrey <laughs> playing Jim playing Carrey. God. <laughs> <laughs> playing Jim Carrey. Who's playing God? <laughs> and that's pretty much what Johnny Depp's become. And it sucks because I like Johnny Depp. He's a good actor. He just gets cast in really bizarre roles that aren't really that good anymore. True. I mean, when he plays in uh, Dr. Seuss movies, he's awesome. Like, mm -hmm. The Grinch, Gordon, those were great movies. Um, but in things like um, Alice in Wonderland, that, no, that just doesn't work. And I like I like the Alice in Wonderland Disney movie, but it's not a movie I can sit down and watch a few times in a week. It's just I'll get bored. Yeah, if it's on TV. I I love the Alice in Wonderland stories and everything. I love uh, there's there's a show called Alice. There's a show called Alice out right now that's really really intriguing. It's like Alice in what it's like Wonderland in the future. So it's like developed and everything and become an actual kind of society, but it's still got the madness of the fact that it's Wonderland. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and I'm like, this is really interesting. I like uh, its portrayal in Once Upon a Time, which is a really good show. Um, I love American McGee's Alice. <laughs> I love that so much. It's just the Disney movie, it never, I, it never well, they really took away intrigued a lot of me. It. Well, it's, they took away a lot of it, and my main thing is just like, it. it's too crazy. Well, it, it never seems like Alice wants to leave there. She's just walking through it and bumping into these characters. Whereas the other Alice is like, Okay, I gotta get back out of here. <laughs> this place is gonna make me go crazy. That's true. And then you get the Johnny Depp one where it's like, Oh, I'm here, I know I'm, I'm here. crazy, All and right. now Whatever. I'm gonna fight things. It's like, I like the snarky Alice from American McGee's Alice Madness Returns. I have it on the PC and I've been playing through it. It's a depressing game, so you can't play it for very long. <laughs> but I play it and I'm just like... She ends up in Wonderland and her response is pretty much like... Oh god damn it. Not again. Yeah. Alright, how do I get out of this now? 
and then she just pretty much walks through. She doesn't, nothing phases her anymore because of what happened in the first one. It's like Ratchet in the new games. He's no longer phased by anything. In the first game, Giant Robot comes out in front of him, and he's like, Oh my gosh! And now he's like, Giant Robot comes out in front of him, he just pulls out the gun and shoots it Indiana Jones style. 